Hello, welcome to Lucy's Big Beautiful World of Painting. Today I am going to do a nice misty barn scene that I hope you'll enjoy and it's really a very beginner class, um, a beginner painting. So um, I'm going to start out uh, just showing you how I do the acrylic um, beginning of it, okay? And I'm using a nice Wilson Bickford panel. It's a really nice hard panel. And, uh, oh, sorry, you can see underneath here what I've done already. I want to show you how easy it is to do that. I know some of you are probably saying I wouldn't even be able to draw that. But drawing and painting is two different things. Let me just show you how easy it would be to get just this little scene on, okay? So I'm just using a flat -a brush. Uh, this is, uh, I have some acrylic in here, just some black acrylic paint, all right? And just for example, if you can draw a square here we go, there's a little square, okay? This is simple, uh, easy perspective, I guess you could say, the, um, the way that you used to paint or draw when you were a kid. So if you have a square and you put a triangle on top, there you go, okay? Now, say you wanna put a little, a little silo next to it, you can just come around the top like this, come down, and I just want to show you how I got that black on there. Um, so this way you can see where I, how I started it. I don't have time to paint the whole thing, but I at least just wanted to show you which way I'm going with it. Now, if this was a barn, say, you may not want to put that barn on a steep hill, figuring if there's some cow in that barn, maybe they won't make it down that hill, they'll be tumbling down. So a lot of times I don't put barns on a big hill, but then again, we can make this a cabin like I did before. So to make it a cabin, I'll just come out this way and that's it, okay? So you can just come across and I'm just dipping in some acrylic here, and you can see it's very liquidy, and it'll dry pretty fast. So there we have it. Okay, so that's just a good way to get started. You want to put a little fence over here. You can just come in, and I'm on a chisel edge, just dipping in some acrylic. You can see, and come sideways. Have a little fence post go across. Doesn't have to be neat, okay? It'll still look very nice once we get that, the oil paint on there, and we have a lot of nice colors. Like I said, this is going to be in the background. I'm putting mist over this. All right, so see, you can come in, fix up. Sometimes the more you fix up, the worse you make it, okay? So if you want to put a couple trees in, very simple. You can come in and just kind of dot some trees back and forth. All right, so I just want to give you a couple little ideas how to get the acrylic on. Say so you want a big tree right here. You could just come in and see, I'm just dotting back and forth. Like I said, I'm covering this up. Doesn't have to be that neat, all right? So just imagine then if I were to fill this all in, and this would be all of our land, all right? So there we go. I'm gonna move this acrylic out of the way. Put my brush in the water. When you use acrylic on any brush, especially gesso, you should put it in water right away because it does dry out. So I'm gonna move this way out of the way and gonna come to our painting. So you see, we have the silo, a little, little uh, cabin. I put a little smiley sticker up there because I'm going to have like a moon or a sun, the sun actually, um, poking through. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to the oil phase. So if you do this at home, you let that dry maybe 15 minutes, then you can go right on to the oil phase of the painting. So like I said, anybody can do this. You can always print out a coloring book page and you can trace a background on, okay? Just in case, if you think that even that might be too much. So here we go. I'm going to first get ready with my, um, my background, okay? So we're gonna have to put some oil on here so it's nice and slick for when I put the, um, the paint right on top. We don't want it to, um, to be too rough, okay? And I don't want it to take too long. So I'm just getting some oil. Now, if you're new to painting, you need any kind of linseed oil, walnut oil, anything that's on sale just to start with, okay? And you can use a, a landscape brush, which is like a regular paint brush, or a texture brush, which is um, the same, but um, it doesn't have this angle. These are Wilson Bickford brushes, and his landscape brush has an angle to it, okay? So I'm just gonna come in here, and you can probably see it's a little bit shiny, and that's what we want. I just wanna get a little bit on here, so when I put the grass on in a little while, um, it'll stay, it'll, it won't move around too much, but I won't be struggling to push that paint onto the canvas. Because when you put the gesso on it, it will make it even drier than the actual canvas once it dries. 
So there we go. So I have a little bit of that right on there. I don't even have to wash my brush out. So I'm going to be taking some Fast Flow, and this also I'm using today is a Wilson Bickford flat, uh, Fast Flow White, which is just a mixture of titanium white paint with some thinners in it, okay? So I'm just going to put it right over here, and we'll see if that's enough. And the top I'm going to do with this Fast Flow. Now, same thing, I'm just dipping the brush in, and I'm just going to rub some of this on. Now that might be a little too much that I put right there, so I'm going to really try to spread it out. Now we're putting this in the back because we want to make sure that we can blend our sky very easily, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to put just a little bit of color in it. But first, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to cover this up with a little bit of white. And I may end up putting a little bit of color in there, but for now I just am going to do the white, all right? because we want it to be maybe a little bit of gray. We, and don't worry, you see how I'm losing the picture? See, I have a little a couple birds in there. I'm losing the picture, but I can wipe that out with a paper towel. All right, so now that we have some white on there, what I'll do is I'm going to come in with a little bit of blue, just a little. I can always add more blue. Once you add too much, it's hard to take it away. A little blue, and I'm gonna get a touch of the black. And that might be a little too much, okay? So I'll go back in here and try to gray that down. We don't want it too colorful yet, all right? So there we go. So I have a little bit of a grayish color. Maybe I'd like a little more blue. So see, I'm just kind of moving over little bits at a time there. There we go. So I have like a gray-blue color. So I'm going to test that out and see how that looks. All right, so there we go. So now it's a little bit of gray-blue. Now, I'm just scrubbing it in right now, so it looks a little rough, but that's okay, because I have a mop brush, which I'll show you, that I can smooth that out. All right, so I'm going over everything. Now, on top, though, I do want the top to be bluer, because that's the sky. I mean, it's all sky, but I want it to be bluer, and it'll relate better to the camera, too. So I'm going in and getting more blue in there. Okay, so we have a little more blue. So I'll start up top. Here I go. I'm just rubbing the sky in. No rhyme or reason to this, just kind of putting in that blue, rubbing it around. And as I come down, I won't put any more paint because I don't I want it bluer on top, and I don't want so much blue as we get towards the bottom. So I can always wipe some of this out. All right? I'm just rubbing this together. It looks a little rough right now. What I'm going to do is take a little bit off of my brush. So all I'm going to do is Pat and wipe. I'm trying to get some of that off. Then I will go back and I will blend it. I still have too much off on there. I mean, I have to get more off. So still a little bit too much blue, but we can get away with it. And I'm doing X stroke, and I'm going pretty fast. Of course, at home, you don't have to go this fast, OK? And take your time. I advise that you watch the video first, the show, and then get your supplies out, and then go back and follow along. And feel free to write to me if you have any questions, OK? And I'll be more than happy to help you. So now you can see as I'm blending, it doesn't look as shiny. And it's starting to look more like a sky, all right? So I'm going, I want to blend that a little bit more. So what I can do is I can get out a mop brush. And the mop brush will even blend it even more. And again, I'm using the X strokes, and I can even rub this a little. This will help get rid of those lines. You can see the difference, how it's getting rid of the lines. I'm going around this little smiley face sticker. All right, there we go. So hopefully that's starting to look like fog. And I'll show you how we do get to this to even look more foggy in the back. All right, and I have to go over this little fence I put in there and across. So that might be okay just for a simple sky, and I can always come back and work on that sky if I have time, all right? So now, all I have to do is come in with a paper towel, and I can come in here and just wipe some of this off. If you feel that it's too white, you know, too much paint on there, you just wipe it off and you kind of find it again. Now, we don't want to wipe it all off because we do want it to look 
like it's in the background. We don't want it to be dark. We just want that dark up front. I can try to wipe the birds a little bit there, coming over to the tree and just wiping across. So the idea is to get that to look like it is some fog in the background, okay? And I think that we've accomplished that. So what I will do is I'm going to go on to the land area. Now, after I take off the smiley face, I'm going to put a little yellow in there, okay? So just it's supposed to be like the maybe the sun is start, is trying to get through that fog all right so we'll start to put a little light colors in here this way it looks like it's starting to shine through all right so first what we want to do is we want to get these grasses in i'm using just a texture brush all right and this is a sap green and i'm just poking this paint in here all right and i'm going to start going across with this green all right, and I'm just going to pat it on. Now, I'm going very lightly under here because I know I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to be putting some white and some yellow, all right? And I can come across here, and that's okay that there's some white under there. Just looks like a little highlight. Little happy accidents happen. Now, what I'm doing is I'm putting the green, but I'm not covering all of this black up. We want some of that black to show through. All right. Now, as we get down closer to the bottom of the canvas, I'll even leave more black showing through. And that'll give it more depth. It'll make it look like this is closer to us. All right, getting more green. This will use pretty much paint. And what's good is you can see I'm letting the paint come off of the brush before I reload it. And I'm going back and forth. And then this way, it's light, dark, light, dark another way to give more depth without doing hardly anything at all. So I do like the way this black is showing through right now. So these are little tricks I learned from Wilson Bickford. Um, I'm one of his certified instructors and I learn a bunch of tricks from him and uh, tips and trips <laughs> and trips I should say, <laughs> not trips, tricks. And I'm happy to to follow his instruction and uh, I, I like to um, learn as much as I can. This way I could share it with everybody. And you can see again I loaded more paint so now it's it's more green over here and I can turn the brush over and I'm just pouncing it across and filling in the land. All right as I get down here I'm gonna put even less and less paint. So just a little bit more and we will start putting in some coloring and once you see that coloring then you'll really see the idea of the painting. So I'm just bringing this paint down. I'm not adding more painting at this, uh, more paint at this time because I want it to look a little bit. I'm just getting this little bit at the end. So I'm not going into that heavy pile of paint like I did before. All right, and then I'm gonna step back a little because I'm right on top of it and it's hard to see. I'm just trying to cover up. I am gonna cover up some of these little markings I had from carrying the canvas. And I can always go back and put that in there. All right, so we should have some good depth to this land. There we go. Okay, so I'll step back just a bit. And I think that's okay to start with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just wipe out my brush because now we want to go to a lighter color. So you can see how much comes out. Okay, so rather than wash it, I try very hard not to wash brushes when I'm painting until I'm done. All right, so it just makes things much easier. So what I want to do is, see, I got a lot out of there. I am going to come into some yellow, all right? Now, it's going to turn light green, all right? And that's what we want. We want like a, like a light green. I'm pulling some in there. I don't want it too yellow. I could always make it more yellow. I think I'll add a little bit of white, and we'll see what we get. We'll get like a pale green color. So underneath this moon, or sun, sun I should say. I'm just tapping on and going across, okay? Now you're gonna see the painting come to life. Once I start getting some highlights on, you really can start to see. So I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping. And as I go down, I'm making my lining up here. I have it more concentrated. I'm spreading it out a little bit more down here and putting less and less. Okay, so hopefully now you can see a little bit of depth to that painting. What I will do is I will take this little smiley face off. This way you get a 
better idea. And I got some blue in there and that's okay. I'm just gonna take a little, a little mop brush just to make it easier. Um, you could use uh, a flat brush if you're good at getting circles with a flat brush. Um, I find it easier just to use a little mop brush. So I have some white here and I put a little touch of yellow in there. Remember, this is supposed to be the uh, sun poking through, all right? So I'm just gonna rub this on. I'll try not to go too much into that blue, um, otherwise we'll get a green. Now I'm gonna have to hit that blue on the bottom there that went underneath the sticker, and that's okay, I'll do that last. So we'll see if we can try to avoid getting green, and I think I got lucky that time. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna put this little mop brush down. I may not need that again. So you can see, so if we're just imagining that now this is starting to, to poke through a little bit, okay? Now, with this type of painting, we can add so many things to it. In the front, I'd like to add some, some little wildflowers and some red. Red and green is, is wonderful together. Um, I could put, uh, could put a big tree on. So why don't we do that? Just, uh, I'm going to get a uh, filbert brush and I'm gonna put a tree in there. Since we have time, I'm gonna add a little bit extra, okay? So I'm going into a Van Dyke brown and I'm going to dip in some paint thinner, okay? I wanna loosen that paint up because we're gonna go right on top of that background now. We will pick up some of that paint. So I'm going in some Van Dyke Brown. You can see I'm just mixing it on the brush here and I really wanna loosen it up so I think I'll dip again. I have a little container of paint thinner there and hope you can see that. I'm just watching that red. I got a little bit of run there and here we go. So. I don't want to cover my birds. You can see these little birds coming through there. Uh, those are just V's, just to let you know. When you're painting a bird, um, you're, they're just little V's, okay? That's all they are. They're not tight V's, they're open V's. And that's all you have to do is with a thin liner, just put them right on there, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tree right about here, I think. And look at that, whoop, coming right in there. All right, I will go over it again. And I don't want it straight. I can paint it straight if I want it. I'm purposely picking up the brush and trying not to make it so straight. All right, so I'm making the base. You can see I'm making that base a little wider. Now, putting that tree in, it gives a nice dimension to, uh, not dimension, I'm sorry, more depth to the painting, okay? so. Let's take a look there, see what I have. And I think that's pretty good. Now, what I will do is I can come in just with this brush, because this brush, even if it's a filbert, has a nice chisel edge. What I mean by chisel edge, you could see that I'm flattening the brush. I'll try to get a couple of bigger branches in here. So I'm just pushing and wiggling and then lifting up the pressure. And I'll come back, this will save time. I usually do all of these with a, um, a script liner, which I will show you, but I just want to get a couple on here just for the sake of time to make sure that I show you how we get some thicker branches on, okay? So here we have some thicker ones, and that's okay. I have that coming in. You can see it's picking up some of that white, and I could always come in here and fix this edge up, and that's all things I could do in a little while. I wanna make sure I get that lesson. So I have a couple of big branches on. I'll come in and show you how to put some small ones on. What I do want to do though, is I want to give a little dimension to this tree. So I'll come over to this yellow and just see what kind of color I get in here. And just kind of put a little bit, as you can see, I'm just gently moving some of this color on there. So that could be a little shine, a little highlight. And this is just a quick way just to get a little color in there. And that'll give it a little bit more dimension. Okay, hopefully that shows a little. What I should probably do is put a little white just so you probably the, the camera will pick it up a little better. There we go. So just so it looks like some lining in the tree, all right? And that's something you could always, you know, like I said before, you have to take your time doing. So what I do wanna do is I wanna switch to a liner so I can show you how to get some thin branches in. Now, here's a Wilson Bickford number two script liner and they go by number. So number one script liner would be smaller. Wilson Bickford has a nice number two. I dipped it in the terpenoid again, and I'm coming over to my brown and I'm rolling the brush 
and it's a nice liquidy paint. I'm going to lift my arm up and I'm just dragging. I hope my arm is not in the way there, so I'll try to do more up here. And see, I'm dragging. So see how these branches I'm making thinner than the other ones? Now, see how I aimed that branch uh, towards the sun? That kind of gives a little, a little focal point uh, for people to look at. It kind of draws your attention that way. So what I'm doing is now is I'm just putting in some. You can see I'm wiggling my hand. I'm just adding them wherever I see, you know, maybe a spot that might need some. All right, so I like the idea of bringing, oops, <laughs> you can see I picked up some paint there, coming back, rolling the brush, and I decided I want to put a little more in here. Now, see, I got a little liquidy, and that's okay, I just kind of spread that out. I wanted my branches a little further down my tree, okay, so I think that's pretty good. What I want to do now is show you a fun brush called a funny brush, and that's what it's called, a funny brush. Now, this um, brush is very easy to do leaves. So, for beginners, this is great. I'm just dipping it into the terpenoid. I'm coming over into this red paint over here. Let's make a really bright red tree. Goes really nice against that green, okay? Now, I'm dipping this funny brush, which is just like rubber bands, and swirling it. See, I filled that brush up. I know it's red and there's red paint on it. Hopefully you can see that. And I'm just gonna come in here and moving my hand back and forth, I'm just gonna put on the illusion of little leaves. I'm coming over to each of the branches, back and forth, and you can see now we have a little color in this painting, and that makes a really nice difference. There we go, and you can put as much as you want. Doesn't necessarily have to be red. I mean, you can add any color you want. If you want a fall scene, of course, you don't have to do every branch. You can go right over some of the tree Okay, so it looks like maybe they're falling off. What's really nice to do is to come down and put some in here. Maybe it looks like they fell off, or it could just be an illusion of, of flowers. Now, on the bottom of that tree, I think that I wanna kinda anchor it in. It kinda looks like it's floating. So all I'm doing is I'm coming over with that same brush I used before, and I could just come in here and tap. Now, I'm trying not to get in that red, because I'll pick that up there. Now it looks like it's kinda anchored in there. Okay, now I think I may want that a little bit brighter. So I'm coming into some white and I'll just come in here just on the top a little bit and I'm adding a little bit more brightness. All right, now you can see that makes a nice difference. So this background stays as is. That's just as it is, okay? I can put another tree coming in the side. I can keep adding and adding and adding. Um, you can make the painting your own. I do like how this looks, this red here. So I may come in, put a little more of the red. Maybe it looks like they, they kind of fell off over there. So I do like the idea. I love that red, okay? Now, what I can do, since I have a little more time, is I can show you that we can even add more depth to the painting by adding another branch, all right? I'll go back to my, my liner, all right? And back into that brown. And it looks like it's still pretty liquidy. Usually it evaporates. The, the thinner does evaporate, all right? And I can come right in from the side here and I can make it look like maybe there's a tree coming from that side, all right? Notice that I am kind of aiming. Oops, I kind of slipped a little bit there. That's okay, because we'll put some, uh, some leaves on there. And see, I'm aiming at the sun. I'm going back. When you see me go back down there, that means I'm just dipping in a little bit of terpenoid. All right. Now, this is going to look like some trees on the side. See, I got a little heavy handed there. That's okay, because you know what? I'll just break that up a little. All right. You can see when it gets dry, it breaks a little, and I pushed on the brush, and that's what made that bigger branch. Okay. And that's good. We want that. You can overlap some branches. So this you can add as much or as little as you want and that'll give even more depth to the painting because now all of this in the fog is going to look in the background. So let me get another one in here. All right, and just kind of adding wherever I see fit to add. I can try. Oh, I got lucky with that. Most of the time you can't go over it twice. I got pretty lucky that time. Um, I'll add a little more. 
Okay, and then I will go back to the funny brush. Same thing, I'm dipping the funny brush into the solution there, and here we go. I can come back here and I can dab this bright red on. All right, and I'm turning my hand back and forth. As long as you have the right consistency and it's pretty thin, you're pretty, pretty good, it won't pick up paint. If you have the wrong consistency, it will pick up the paint in the background. All right. So I like the idea of maybe putting a little bit more over here since I have a lot on that side. And I'm just going to step back one second, take a peek at what I have, and put some red up here too. I'll get a little crazy with that red. All right. There we go. Now, the, um, I think what I'll do, since I have another minute, is I'm going to show you how to um, get those birds on there, all right? So I have this brown here. It's a little too brown. I think I'll come into this blue, see what we get. And I'll add a little bit of white. Try to just get a, a little bit of a gray color. There we go. I got a little bit of a gray, just so those birds don't look that dark, all right? Now I'm rolling the brush. As you can see, rolling the brush. So all I have to do, if these birds would be more in the background, if I want to put some birds that look like they're closer, I'll leave these here in, in the mist, and then I can come over here, maybe by the, uh, the sun, and there is my lazy V, okay? So what I mean by lazy V is that the V is opened up. It's not a tight V, all right? And I made them a little, it's a little, these are a little bigger, all right? So you can see I'm just holding my pinky. I'm holding this like a pencil, and... I usually hold my breath while I do it, so I think I'll stop talking for one second while I do that last bird. And you know what? Either way. <laughs> so there we have some birds that look a little bit um, closer. All right, so I think that's it for today. Let me uh, move this out of the way, okay? So just a little recap of what we did. I put some, um, some clear medium on the bottom, some white on top. I added some color. It little color at a time because it's hard to take it away, okay? Um, I used just a couple of brushes. And notice again, on the bottom, I left more black uh, showing through on top. I wiped off some of the uh, fast flow here. And there we have it, a quick painting. And you could do any, any object that you want in this fashion if you want the background to look like some mist. So there we have it. Thanks for tuning in today. If you have any questions again, um, please uh, write to me. My email is painted, the number four letter U, by Lucy at yahoo.com. And you can come over to my website at www.lucysworldofpainting.com. Thanks again for tuning in.